Hello, I'm Laramie, and I'm in one of the medicinal herb greenhouses run by Miss Magnolia's Moxie. I wanted to tell you a little bit about the video you're about to watch. It's a clip from one of the many instructional videos that we upload to our recurrent and seasonally focused course, the P3 Exchange. In that, we focus for four to six weeks on a single herb, and we learn everything we can about it and all the herbal skills associated with it, from botanical ID to horticultural techniques, processing and phytochemistry, clinical use and concepts, as well as becoming the best herbal researcher possible. And we tailor it to the needs and experience levels of the students that join us each session, and we change the herbs up every single session. So if you're joining us from session to session, you get something new and interesting every single time. It is entirely built for you to become a more integrated and confident herbalist so that you can bring the plants that you love to the people that you love. We hope you enjoy the clip and we hope to see you in the next session of the P3 Exchange. And in terms of morphology, these plants can get incredibly tall. And if they're, if they're left unchecked, if you don't harvest the new growth every time you see it, they can reach six to eight feet tall. And this is kind of what you want them to be if you're trying to use nettle for fiber. The flower is dioecious, this will be important later on, meaning that the staminate or male and pistillate female flowers are on different plants and the flowers are very, very small. The inflorescence is catkin-like, it can be 3.2 inches long or more, and it typically is longer than the leaf stalks. Now, two very important features of identification for this plant is that the leaves are opposite, right? And they are stalked and stipulate. So if you see here on this picture, they're the leaves are coming out from the same point in opposite directions. That's an opposite leaved plant. The leaf shape is ovate or narrowly ovate with a chordate and round base. They are long tipped and serrated. I would actually call them toothed, but they're serrated. Um, so another important, semi-important feature of nettle is that the leaves towards the top tend to be much more narrow, whereas towards the bottom, they tend to be a bit broader. But narrow leaves towards the top is very asso is associated with true nettle or true urtica dioica. Um, the leaves tend to have stinging hairs. Those hairs can be on the top or the bottom or both, and they tend to be dark green. The fruit or the seeds are elliptic, flat, dull, and yellowish brown. And I've included a picture here because it's just much easier to visualize it than to hear those terms. And this is a picture of it on the plant, and this is an up-close picture. It's, if, if you don't know what the flowers versus the seeds look like, then it's easy to mistake the seeds for the flowers, and this happens a lot for people. So if you're out and you're trying to look for nettle seeds, this is what they look like. And you can refer to this, or you can refer to um, Kim Walker's article on it, which is included in the sources. So keep in mind going forward, the dioecious of the flowers um, the opposite leaves, the stinging hairs. It's going to be important to identifying it in comparison to its lookalikes, which we're about to cover. So there are a lot of doppelgangers for um, dioica, and we're going to go over kind of general strategies for how to differentiate them from true nettle when they are not flowering. When they are flowering, it's very easy to tell the difference, but when they are flowering, then uh, when they aren't flowering, I'm sorry, when they are flowering, it's easier to tell the difference. When they aren't flowering, um, then you need to use other strategies. So the most popular one, the most common one that I see that is kind of mistaken for nettle is wood nettle, Laportia canadensis. Like false nettle and clearweed, it is a member of the Urticaceae family. And like nettle, it is edible. Uh, it's got a much milder flavor than nettle does. But if you, you know, if you substitute it out for nettle, just expect a much more mild flavor. Um, it is edible. Uh, in most cases, it's used interchangeably in the culinary realm, less so in the medicinal realm. But it's different from nettle in that it has alternate leaves, right? Whereas true nettle, as we just learned, has opposite leaves. So wood nettle has alternate leaves. Now, wood nettle also contains stingers, right? It does contain stingers, and it can sometimes sting worse than true nettle. So wood nettle contains stingers, but it has alternate leaves, and that's how you can differentiate it um, from Urtica dioica. The other two that are very similar to nettle and also members of Urticaceae are false nettle and clearweed. However, unlike true nettle, they do not have stingers, right? They do, however, have opposite leaves, and this can throw people off. So if you see here in the pictures, both false nettle, Bimeria cylindrica, and clearweed, Pilea pumula, have opposite leaves. But another feature of the leaves that really gives them away is that the leaves come out from the stem 
much further than the leaves of true nettle. And the leaves are broader, especially towards the top. You know how we talked about those narrow leaves, those really narrow leaves for true nettle? Well, these have much broader leaves overall. Those leaves tend to come out. They tend to hang off the plant a lot more. And one of the ways that I tend to tell uh, false nettle apart from clearweed is that clearweed's got this very glossy top. And you can see that in the image as well. So for false nettle and clearweed, they have no stingers despite being oppositely the, the leaves being opposite. Um, whereas wood nettle has alternate leaves, but it does have stingers. And in terms of edibility, these are purported to be edible. I've never tried them, but a lot of foragers I know would not try them or would not recommend them, mainly because they're just not very palatable. You know, they, uh, wood nettle is more palatable, uh, true nettle is more palatable. So I guess you could experiment. I would be very careful, but um, I would generally say that these are not, not edible or not pal palatable. The last one, and I, I say this with a great deal of seriousness, this one is so poisonous, is white snake root. And the reason I bring this one up is, yes, it looks very different. Uh, it's not even in the same family. This is in the Asteraceae family. When it flowers, you can definitely tell that it's not nettle. Um, but when it's not flowering, I have actually seen a lot of beginning foragers mistake this one for true nettle. And that's very, very scary because this one can actually kill you. And uh, similar to false nettle and clearweed, this lookalike also has opposite leaves. So it shares that with true nettle. But like false nettle and clearweed, this one also doesn't have stingers. And it's got that really, really broad base that true nettle typically doesn't have um, for the leaves towards the top of the plant. So there are more identifying characteristics. But if I were you, I would just kind of go with the approach of if it looks like nettle, but it doesn't have stingers, don't touch it don't eat it. It's not edible. You shouldn't touch it. It could, it could be white snake root. It could be false nettle. Maybe you don't know how to tell the difference. But if it doesn't have stingers and it looks like nettle, it isn't nettle and you shouldn't eat it. However, if it looks like nettle and it does have stingers and you maybe have forgotten that nettle has opposite leaves and wood nettle has alternate leaves, then you've probably found wood nettle, right? Stingers looks like nettle might be nettle or it might be wood nettle. But if it has no stingers and looks like nettle, don't eat it, don't touch it, don't, don't harvest it. And when you aren't sure, take a picture and post it online, get somebody to help you with it, um, show pictures of the, of the leaf branching pattern, um, show pictures of the leaf, any information that you can give someone to give so that they can give you a 100% confirmed ID. And for me, more detailed comparisons, you can actually check out the highlighted parts of the sources page. Um, there are some people who have done articles comparing two or more of these in great detail, um, but this is my general method when I'm trying to kind of share how to differentiate nettle lookalikes when you're out in the forest, right? And I'll just repeat it one more time because it's an important rule. If it looks like nettle, but it has no stingers, don't eat it, don't consume it, right? It's not edible or it's poisonous, but if it does have stingers and it looks like nettle, you're probably looking at one of two options.